Hello guys. I hope everything is fine technically and you can see and you can hear me and this might be our tradition already. Can you please confirm that everything is fine and you can see me and you can uh, hear me? Somebody? Not yet. Oh yeah, I see that. My favorite word comments appearing. <laughs> so yeah, I hope everything is fine and I'm really happy to spend this next hour with you. And uh, hopefully I will be able to answer more of your questions and to tell you the truth, I always have this habit of reading more uh, after we finish. And I notice that there are so many interesting questions that I failed to answer. And I'm really glad to see so many of you coming from your uh, coming from different places and uh, thank you very much for being with me and please feel free to ask your questions I'm always glad to answer them and to um, provide any kind of knowledge you're interested in uh, about my country Ukraine and of course some global international things that you consider important or maybe you believe that me as Ukrainian and uh, is able to answer and I see first question marks are appearing so I will try to uh, scroll yes I'm still uh, looking for uh, photos of flags and the demonstration of support that you, we can see in your countries and it's very important for me because uh, I share it on my Facebook, I share it with uh, some local media and many people are surprised at how much support we receive in some totally unexpected uh, places. That's why uh, that is interesting. Uh, can we get new stamps internationally? I guess you're asking about those favorite stamps that uh, demonstrate Russian worship that is sent really far away. And other things, yes, as far as I know, even our Ukrainian post office, central post office that is known as Ukurposhta is going to open its shop on Amazon and perhaps both buying and delivery will be easier and uh, good. Okay, <clears throat> I'm scrolling the question, so if I look <laughs> weird that way, just because I'm reading the uh, text. And the question, greetings to Sweden, and um, can I see life going back to how it was before the war, after the war is over? What have you found out about yourself during this war? Thank you very much. That is a truly interesting question, because I often think about that. I do believe uh, that in the majority of things, we will be able to come back to normal. But I also think that we will change tremendously. And there are two scenarios that I have in my head. One is pessimistic, another one is optimistic. A pessimistic scenario tells me that we will have, uh, starting from this economical downfall and the infrastructure ruined, lots of places that are no more suitable for life. And uh, also, but I don't worry much about that because I believe with investments, with the support of the world, it's easier to reconstruct and maybe to build even better. But I'm very much worried for people who will be traumatized physically and psychologically. And uh, families, uh, people like this kind of change in your life as war definitely changes in everyone um, important things. And I think it's impossible to come out of war even from a semi dangerous zone uh, without any important inner changes in yourself and uh, so many people like may maybe some people who were uh, who are in hot zones will be uh, visibly traumatized some people are invisibly traumatized all of that is a difficult process that will take years to find out but I also have an optimistic being an optimist myself I have an optimistic vision and when I look at this post-war generations in um, Europe uh, in the United States after the Second World War I would say this is a very strong optimistic generation a generation that was able to create lots of things and this are uh, talking about the changes in me, I observe a lot. And I also have some other issues connected with that in my life. And to tell you the truth, I like the version of myself I have now. 
I do feel sometimes vulnerable. I don't let myself feel like a victim. I feel like a person under threat, but not like a victim. And also I have this desire to live a life, you know, just like not to get prepared for it, but just to live. There are lots of things that, lots of fears that I have lost. Uh, for example, I don't like driving. <laughs> now I want driving. I hate flying planes. I play, I fly, but I hate, and now I dream to fly to different countries and I know I won't be afraid of that because I'm a person like I'm a perfectionist in many things and I'm very mm, accurate and I always like to control situations and now you realize there is nothing you can control and this illusion is lost and maybe I feel myself as more adventurous <laughs> if you can say it in the context of uh, war so are you safe are there air raids, uh, sirens in my town? Yes, from time to time. As I have already mentioned, I live in the western part of Ukraine, which is considered semi-dangerous, but we did have missile targeting our objects, uh, our airport. We had uh, casualties, not many. We don't have Russian tanks, but we do have Belarus pretty close, and we are very much concerned right now about what is going on. And of course, air raids are typical. Sometimes you don't have them for a day or two. Of course, if to compare my region with the eastern part or with K, we have less air raid uh, sirens, but we do have them from time to time. What is also problematic, many people uh, get used to that and ignore them. And for example, um, the tragedy of Kremenchuk is also based on the fact that not all people <clears throat> left the uh, tra trading center and this led to a really big number of uh, victims. Uh, but in general, like, um, I'm not a very, um, I don't know, how do you call a person that is not easily frightened? Uh, so I'm not that terrified with the news on Belarus, for example. I do believe that we are prepared and uh, there is nothing else we can do. Like, And um, to tell you the truth, I have mentioned that in some of the texts that I write and I feel it all the time, that sometimes the... Um, premonition that like when you feel when you expect the war is even worse than the war itself because for a month or two we were very much in that aura and you had these doubts and you observed this normalities in your life you were afraid that soon you will lose it and when it all started well to some extent uh i can tell you like you feel uh, a little bit like it's not easier but it's going on already you are inside of this process and you don't have a choice of course, my greetings uh, uh, explain the context of my thumbnail. Well, a fresh photo. Uh, but I have already told you that I also have an NGO uh, that works with cultural heritage, in for media literacy, education, many different areas. And we have one uh, grand project that is dedicating to the fixing of war um, experience in Ukraine. And we are preparing six interviews with different people who, despite all the hardships of war, continue fighting and lead our country to the victory. And we filmed these videos on a totally dark background because we want to attract attention to people to their emotions, to their thoughts, and this was just from one of the filmings, and I decided to take this photo because I, I, I like the way it looks, and soon I will, uh, like, that's a Ukrainian language project, but we have decided to prepare English subtitles, these are eight, ten minute interviews, but I will share with you guys as soon as they are ready because there are lots of really strong uh, stories. And for example, one of the first stories is about one lady who is a volunteer since 2014. And recently she has lost her son uh, in war, but uh, she's very strong and she continues working hard and she describes her experience and also explains what things lead her uh, to continue her fight and how she feels what is victory, what is going to um, be. I am able to work during these times. Yes, I'm able to work. Once again, I live in a semi-dangerous uh, zone where we have internet, we have cafes working, and um, I even run in the park in the mornings. Uh, of course, we have to be careful. We have like 
to think what do we spend our money on, um, I don't know, to update the information. You cannot live a normal life when you receive news like that. When you think about the parts of your country being torn, when you have many people around you uh, who suffer or who are at war. But I'm able to continue working and I have one interesting thing. Typically when I'm under stress, I'm kind of hyperactive. <laughs> and for me, working is a kind of distraction that helps me really a lot and uh, that's uh, that's it Anna how are you <laughs> that is a difficult question you know I have told you that Ukrainians have this really bad habit contrary to the English speaking world uh, when people ask you how are you you're supposed to say I'm fine and in Ukraine it's not like that when you're asking someone how are you the person starts telling you like okay my mother my brother and so on so in general I am uh, more or less normal but uh, like this is a new totally weird kind of uh, normal and my emotions change really quickly but I'm happy to be here with you and I'm really grateful for the attention I receive and the support I receive from you. And my greetings to Brazil. This is a beautiful country that has lots of Ukrainians as far as I know and I would like to visit Brazil uh, one day. And um, yeah, I'm really glad that uh, Stafira has joined us. I uh, see your uh, oh my God, uh, commands and uh, I like them. Um, and uh, greetings to Albania and to Switzerland. And thank you very much. How do parents explain the war to their children? Uh, well, I'm not a parent myself, and I think it be, it depends greatly on uh, what kind of parents and what kind of uh, children. You know that many refugees in Europe, these are mothers and uh, children, and many of them like decide to live even uh, semi-safe zones like the part where I live because they want to protect children from sirens, they want to protect children from this hiding in bomb shelters, in corridors and something else and uh, that is an understandable thing but many children are uh, know many things and um i think they will be strong because like you know children sometimes are really quickly adapted to the information and they know that russia is our enemy and uh, it must be like that but of course it's a totally different situation for children in those active war zones and this is a true tragedy because many of them get injuries many children are killed during this war and these numbers are terrifying and of course, this is one more awful crime of Putin's regime, crime against humanity, genocide. Many children, thousands of children were stolen and taken to Russia for adoption and all these adoption rules are ruined. I know that during the war, the adoption rules differ and like you can take children temporarily, but you cannot adopt them because there are lots of families that were torn. Maybe in future, they will be able to find their parents. Mm -hmm. uh, but in Russia, it's totally different. And once again, and this resembles this Mongolian approach, Tatar-Mongolian approach, when they um, took uh, children as yasir and tried to make them warriors and fight against their own countries. I think this is a kind of crime that cannot be accepted and treated as normal in the world and still when some people continue talking about saving Russia's face, uh, negotiating, stopping this war, we have to think about all the crimes that they have committed here in Ukraine and of course we have to think about the children that were killed, that were injured or that were stolen during the war. What do you think when war will get over? Well, get over. I don't know when will this war over. To tell you the truth, I was pretty like optimistic at the beginning when we managed to ruin Putin's plan and we broke his idea of Blitzkrieg and he did not manage to take the Kiev. Uh, and I was really happy and we believed like two weeks, then maybe a month. And now we realize that even with success and even with the weapons that we will receive and we're still waiting for many of them, this will take really long. And of course, we cannot accept the uh, ideas of uh, Putin and uh, support his demands because this way, 
we will lose our citizens, our territories step by step. And of course, this kind of evil cannot be like treated as a, a normal state, as a normal regime and so on. So to tell you the truth, I cannot predict. We have like those... Um, are people uh, who inform us about like officials and including president they always try to give you a more optimistic scenario and i understand them as we don't always know the number of victims because you have to stay strong and this is a very mm, typical behavior during the war and uh in but definitely uh, it will not over in a month or in two and I don't know how long will it take. And some people speak about different phases of war. Ones are hotter, others are uh, cooler, maybe less territories are involved or less people are involved. But in general, unfortunately, it will take time. What I'm very much worried about is the fact that <clears throat> uh, Putin will manipulate the cold season and uh, electricity and gas needed for the heating in the European Union. And they will perhaps try to influence European politicians so that they influence us to sit at the table of negotiations. And this is definitely something we don't want to because, like, because we cannot negotiate with people who came to kill you. Uh, in Western media, we are seeing more articles about the West losing interest in patients with Ukraine. Is it true in Ukraine as well? Ooh. Well, like, we focus on positive things. We do understand that the longer this war continues, the more people will lose their interest. And that's a serious problem because the world should not get used to war. And this is not something normal that can exist in the 21st century. And of course, uh, it is dangerous because this fire, this infection, Russian, uh, can spread to other parts. And you know that they threaten Lithuania, they threaten Poland. And somehow they believe that this policy of threatening is uh, totally OK. So uh, I do believe uh, that those people who make decisions and those people that influence other people making decisions, and these are citizens, won't let to lose this interest. In Ukraine, we cannot lose interest. It's not interest. It's our uh, plan to survive. Of course, we adjust and maybe we're not that, um, we have less panic attacks, we are more wise in our decisions, in what information we read, what information we share, but also we lose uh, some of the awareness and some people ignore air raid uh, sirens and other things uh, and so on. Uh, Okay, I have this problem, <laughs> curfew, <laughs> what is that, <laughs> shall I Google? Do we have curfew, just a second, like I know many words and I feel like I know this word, but before you explain me, maybe it will be easier for me uh, to find out. Yeah, uh, we have a curfew in Lotsk. This is the time that is regulated during which we have to stay. It was more strict at the beginning of the war. Now it is less. But from 5 a.m. till uh, we cannot go out uh, before 5 a.m. and we have to be home after 11 p.m. And only if you have some permission, you are able to avoid these rules. But in general, we stay at home. And I think that's totally okay. There are lots of things that don't work, like pubs, restaurants, and so on. And uh, in other cities, they are also present everywhere, all over Ukraine. I don't know how about like small villages, how is that controlled? But in my city, if you drive a car, if you go out, you will have problems. They will find you, of course, they will not arrest you or shoot you. But I do know that at the beginning of this war, a couple of the first days, there were even bad situations with people who were escaping the patrol and patrol uh, police, for example, for these are... <clears throat> bad people and uh, maybe there were some problems, serious problems. Do you have friends in Russia? If so, what is... Uh, no, I don't have friends in Russia at all. No, and I'm happy about that. And I never had. Maybe because I live closer to Europe and I have friends in Poland and Lithuania and some other countries. Uh, it was not my intention not to have friends in Russia, but 
I don't. Uh, but I know those people who have friends in Russia, who have relatives in Russia, and even family, like family members, they suffer a lot because in the majority of cases, Russians choose to believe television, not their families. Or at least uh, what they most often do, if they don't believe television and they realize it's war, not a special operation, they still choose not to speak about and they ask their relatives and their friends, let's not talk about politics. Guys, war is not politics anymore. War is war. And um, I think I will record a separate vlog on the fact that Russians are covered. Uh, hello to Vancouver. And um, thank you very much for watching. And um, well, like I'm not an expert, but definitely maybe sometimes I make mistakes in the things that I say, but I don't do that intentionally. And I can guarantee you that I do not manipulate your opinion. Maybe if I make some mistakes later, I will inform you about that. But just like we live in this dynamic environment, things change, but I never intend to tell you something that I don't believe in. And greetings to Australia. Um, okay, um, does you ATV debunker of Russian fake news also appear on uh, both Ukraine? Well, like we work really hard with debunking Russian propaganda and Russian fake news, and uh, it can be pretty difficult. But nowadays, I do believe that we still continue fighting on the battlefield. But I do want to believe that in this. Um, informational field we have managed to win because in 2014 it was really difficult and many um, like Russian TV channels are present all over the world and in the European Union and in the United States and they were spreading their propaganda and many people chose to think it's a civil war so-called or a conflict or something like that and that was due to the fact of uh, Russian TV channels were working over and so on. Mm. Is there anybody among Ukrainian decision makers talking about a new Marshall Plan? Yeah, but uh, like the president speaks about that, but also from what I understand, uh, just like uh, we need some outer experts too, uh, to help us with uh, to help us with this Marshall Plan because it involves the support from other countries and other parts of the world. But, you know, I do like these questions when you ask me about rebuilding Ukraine, investments to Ukraine, is it possible to come and volunteer? And it inspires me because it proves that you believe in our victory and you want to help Ukraine. But also I have some sadness when I think about that because the war is still in a very hot uh, period and this is a difficult process and sometimes well like I think sometimes I think that well I'm lucky to live in this part that is not destroyed and I'm able to uh, talk to you I'm able like to live um, not a normal life but more or less normal uh, normally do my everyday routine and then I realize I don't have any guarantees it will be like that in the next day, in the next months, in the next year. So when we think about this Marshall Plan, we don't know how much of Ukrainian territory uh, we will have to rebuild. Will they stop? When When will we stop them? Um, how many missiles they will shoot? And you all remember really not a couple of days ago, like how massive uh, these attacks were totally like unpredictable maybe even hotter than at the very beginning of this war so it's very difficult to plan rebuilding when they continue destroying um, i i do believe such plans are needed and uh, there are lots of smart people talking about them starting from boris johnson and finishing with our local authorities but it, it is yet difficult do you know how the average citizens abroad can help? It all depends. Of course, there are lots of ways that you can help. And I'm very grateful for those of you who help anyway, in any kind, uh, any kind of help. Starting from conversations that you have with people who doubt this war is important and dangerous for the world. Finishing with money and efforts that you give, accepting refugees, sharing news, 
um, helping with pro provision weapons and uh, influencing your senators. All of that is very, very, very important. Even taking pictures of the flags because it also demonstrates the support and you being with Ukraine. And now I realize how it is important not to ignore wars in various parts of the world, how it is important to live globally and think globally. This is something that was not typical for Soviet uh, schools and Soviet, like um, post-Soviet countries. So they were very much behind the iron curtain and fixed on inner problems. And I do believe this is what I like about EU education. This is what I like about the US education that sometimes uh, people are taught to focus on global subjects. And what can you do? Uh, well, first of all, you can work with Ukrainian refugees. You can come in contact. I have a separate video on volunteering, a separate vlog. You can find some links to official English speaking funds that collect money and you can see on what this money uh, are going. Also, you can influence your uh, politicians who sometimes have doubts or are bribed by Russians or whatever. You can hand out a flag, whatever is like, I don't want this help to be difficult for you. Uh, whatever you feel like doing is closer to you because, for example, I'm also like, I can help with volunteering from time to time. I mean, collecting and doing something, but I'm more in the informational field and I'm trying not to feel guilty for not, I don't know, doing nets or something because I'm not good at doing that, but I'm good at doing something else. So in that field of help for Ukrainians, you can find something that is closer to you uh, and less difficult. And that will also be good because there are lots of areas we can work in. <clears throat> Uh, Ukraine will have to prepare for a future without Russia, same as Europe. What do you think? Please com <laughs> guys, comment. Commands and comments. Comments. I don't know why. Commentary. Uh, Commentary in Ukrainian, maybe. Uh, but maybe I will like die 100 years later with the same problem. Uh, well, I'm ready to live without Russia. I think Russia was really shrewd and it was Russia's plan to make everybody dependent on their energy and resources. And it is not Russia's fault only, it is also our fault because in your life, even in your personal life, it's really bad to depend totally on someone because like, you're not able to make your decisions. And um, I think that uh, the world... Like, Russia will stay. We don't plan, like, even if we are given the best missiles, we don't plan to target civilians and to erase this country from the face of the planet, contrary to what Russians do to Ukrainians. And I do believe that this will be a different Russia and uh, people will be able to buy gas and to talk to their president. It would be really great if Russia would change its territory and shape. Definitely it must be a smaller country, something equal to Moscow region. And there are other beautiful countries that can become independent and maybe more um, negotiable and more innovative and new investments can come. So like this isolation of Russia, this dark Putin's regime must lead to the fall of this regime and the liberation of Russia. But of course, this is going to be a very difficult process because all these people are poisonously brainwashed um, and they are toxic in the way they believe and their beliefs in the way they see the world, how they see enemies everywhere. And for me, Russia is just the Soviet Union. I think it was a mistake to believe that it collapsed. It, it changed its shape. And now, like after 20 years, 30 years, they, Putin has decided to rebuild it. So it is easier to understand Russia when you think of it in the terms of Soviet Union. Weird, but still Soviet Union. And I do think that changing government, changing people's opinions, and in a couple of decades, we can have normal Russia that Ukraine and Europe can work with because it cannot stay that way. Um, okay, just like, I don't know, what can I say about the memory of my father? He was my best father and I have a separate vlog about him, but I don't see a question. What do you believe Putin will do, if anything? Should NATO troops get directly engaged in driving Russia from Ukraine? I personally think we should. 
Well, my like very quickly answering this question, I do believe it would be good if NATO uh, would interfere. I know many of you are afraid of nuclear weapons, but like we did not do anything to really provoke Russia. And then there is a question, how can you provoke Russia if you're not on the Russian territory? We are an independent free state and we can do whatever we want inside of our country. So as long as it is inside of our country, no provocations. And Russians, they always try to warn, you can provocate us and so on and so forth. Sometimes even NATO says it first and then the Russian president uh, repeats. Uh, the, for me, personally, the Third World War has already started. Putin started it when he actually started demonstrating his disrespect to the independence of Georgia, to the independence of Chechnya, to the independence of Ukraine twice. And uh, speaking about Lithuania disrespectfully, speaking about international laws, disrespecting, threatening people. And uh, so he, in his head, started this new, uh, this second, third world war. And the fact whether he will use nuclear weapons or not totally depends on the level of his madness, but not on the behavior of uh, the countries. You all know that with bullies, with criminals, if you accept their terms, if you um, follow their rules, they continue pushing, they continue fighting. So uh, Putin sees West and NATO as weak. And this is what gives him uh, strength to continue. If he was afraid of NATO, he wouldn't have started this war. I, I think so. So, of course, uh, Ukraine uh, has turned into a battlefield. And this is something I did not want. This is something I did not want our infrastructure to be destroyed and things like that to happen to my country. But now it is already happening. And if we lose Ukraine, uh, not only will be my personal tragedy, but it will also be a problem for other states like Poland, like Lithuania, and then many others. And then definitely on a certain period, on a certain step, he will use nuclear weapons. But I think he's a coward and he knows that if he uses them, he dies immediately. And he, you know, with all this Botox, with all this self-protection, with all this really long tables where he afraid to catch a virus, he knows that if he shoots a nuclear bomb or something, he will get a response. So I doubt he will do that, honestly. That's why I am for NATO here. Um, okay, what do Ukrainians think of freedom of Russian legion? You mean those Russians who fight? Uh, it is not a big legion and we don't think about it at all. We are more, like I can tell you, uh, we are more concerned about Belarusians because they promote them and they have fought since 2014 and many of them say this is the experience they need to get to free their country and about this Russian legion, it's not a big deal, like we don't talk about them. Uh, we don't talk much about Russians, even those that are good and I think it's normal, like... Uh, it's not the time and I cannot, should I tell you we're very grateful to them? No, like it's okay that there are some normal people. Maybe they will learn um, something and use it to liberate their own country. And uh, let's hope it will be like that. Uh, which type of demand made by European Union to United Europe? I, I don't get a question. Do you have a routine mental uh, health for mental health? Uh, like you mean me personally or Ukrainians? Um, if I'm correctly, if I correctly understand your questions, like working with psychotherapists and things like that, it's not yet very popular in Ukraine. There, are more of them appear who speak with phob who work with phobias, family relations. There were some special psychiatrists and services that work with post-traumatic syndromes and um, the military, but it is just at the beginning. I cannot say this is a very popular issue and lots of people are doing that. Uh, okay, yeah, something, some comments about how are you? And okay. And just a second. I have lost the question. 
Just a question. We will all die. That is a very pessimistic approach. Uh, good morning. Okay, I guess I will continue with the question the, that I have here. Mm. In winter, oh, so I see that some of you are chatting in uh, uh, the chat and I'm not go. It, it's really lovely and I want to thank you about the conversations that you leave below my videos because I see that these are, you are really uh, clever people who have so much knowledge about different uh, political aspects, historical aspects, and I learn really much from you. And I'm very grateful for that. I was wondering if there are cheap train tickets for traveling in Ukraine by train, something like one ticket that, okay, this is a question from an optimist, I guess, because like there are not <laughs> old places in Ukraine where you can travel to right now because uh, it can be dangerous. And to tell you the truth, many of you ask about uh, this trips like uh when will Ukraine be open? I don't know what are the restrictions, but I do believe there are restrictions and there are lots of places that are dangerous. And people who are Ukrainians who live there, who chose to stay there, they stay there. But I believe that the majority of your countries, the majority of the embassies, they advise not to um, not to travel because it can be dangerous. And uh, you all see, for example, even during the uh, last visit of Angelina Jolie to Lviv, she had to escape and to run the air raids and so on. But um, I guess uh, in general, uh, this practice of one um, ticket for all kinds of transport is not that common, but in the majority of cases, as many Ukrainians travel to the European Union and we like these practices, we try to encourage and accept this uh, in our traditions. Okay, hola desde la Ciudad de México. And yes, I like uh, Spanish language and I dream to learn it better than I do. And greetings to South Africa. And um, curiously, Ukraine has already lost the war and you continue or something. I don't know, maybe that is a troll question, but um, that is an inspiring troll question and you know they always inspire my thinking and their aggression is a sign of like uh, feeling uh, depressed. I think that we have won this war somewhere on the 26th or 27th of February when uh, Putin did not manage to get Ukraine as he planned within three days. His plan was blitzkrieg without all of the sanctions and many European, top European politicians were kind of prepared for that. And they even uh, warned Ukrainian president that we soon we will have to work with other people and pe many believe that Ukraine will fall. So when Ukraine did not fall and the whole world saw the crimes of Putin, put the sanctions and there are other things that isolated Russia, other things that will lead to the economic collapse and other problems. So I do believe that uh, this was the moment when Russia lost. The problem now is that we have to continue fighting. We have to get back our territories and we are losing people because of this totally insane attacks that Russians perform on uh, Ukrainian cities, destroying hospitals, destroying trade centers. They will not win anything with that. They only demonstrate the level of uh, the level of uh, their evil and uh, lead to uh, serious um, isolation and future traumas for Russian society. So for me, it is obvious that we have won this war, we have demonstrated the face of Russia and Putin did not manage to take Kyiv. Putin did not manage to uh, take Odessa. Putin saw that Ukraine is not pro-Russian, that we are not like they had this idea that we will greet their soldiers and uh, there are facts that uh, some of the soldiers even brought their uniforms uh, for parrots 
uh, on the victory day and they were found dead later. So they used these uniforms in a different uh, way. Mm, and definitely uh, that might be a, a nice illustration of uh, how dangerous it is to be isolated in a totalitarian society and to believe your own propaganda. I believe this is what happened. Uh, with uh, uh, this is what happened with Putin. Thank you for calling me brave to deal with so many questions live. I'm sorry, some questions skip and my palms get wet <laughs> because I'm worried. And I want to, I will try to answer some of these questions maybe uh, later. And um, uh, thank you. But anyway, thank you for your uh, support. And I see that the question with NATO is important for all of us. And thank you for enjoying uh, the vlogs daily. And it has become an important uh, question for me. Also, I don't ask, answer very private questions here. And those of you who follow attentively my vlogs might have noticed this thing because the vlog is, is actually about the war. Sometimes I incorporate cultural and... Uh, historical aspects, but I don't feel like talking everything about myself, telling everything. Sometimes when I feel like that, I share stories with you. So uh, where do Ukrainians go on a holiday? Well, uh, in the normal times, I think that slowly we have managed to develop a middle class, the one that irritates Russians so much. And many of the middle class uh, Ukrainians were able to uh, travel to European Union. Uh, not many are traveling to very far away destinations like Latin America or uh, Mexico, for example, but destinations like India, like China are also open. And of course, traditional, very famous locations like Turkey, Egypt, and Tunisia, and uh, many of uh, many countries of the European Union and within the last uh, days I see last years I see that more and more people liked uh, traveling to the European Union and borrowing some ideas bringing them uh, home and also because it's uh, kind of interesting to combine your rest and uh, with uh, seeing uh, new cultures. And also many Ukrainians travel and stay within the country and uh, Carpathian mountains in the west of Ukraine are popular. Odessa and various resorts next to Odessa are also popular. So these are the locations that Ukrainians often visit and discover local green tourism, eco-tourism, gastronomy gastronomy tourism were popular and I do hope that one day we will come back to the moment when it is safe to travel back to Ukraine and you will be able to come and see more of uh, the world uh, mm, okay have you changed narrative from shopping malls and apartment buildings Okay, I see that these are conversations. Um, hablo español pero un poco. Mi padre nació en Argentina, en Buenos Aires, pero en familia ucraniana y ahora tengo mucho, una, una gran familia en Argentina, uh, pero necesito práctica. <laughs> this is a little bit of my Spanish. Uh, um, okay, uh, with, if I'm reading a troll question, that is okay. Um, with so many billions of dollars in euro assistance to Ukraine in money and weapons, do you think some of this assistance can be lost to corruption and greedy politicians? I don't think so. Like, um, well, I cannot tell you that Ukraine is that Ukraine has a problem with corruption. And I think that our problem is more serious than in uh, some standard EU state that demonstrate transparency, good uh, courts and so on. But also, I believe it is not that bad as some people imagine. And younger generations, they are totally anti-corrupt. They don't like these attitudes. Corruption is the heritage of the Soviet Union. 
Russia is very corrupt because it's closer to Soviet Union. The further you are from Soviet Union, the less corrupt you are. So in general, I don't think that serious sums of money uh, will be stolen because now civil society and Ukrainian civil society is really strong and uh, really good. And we are fighting really long, starting from all these revolutions in 2004, in 2014. And now people are very angry, you know, and they keep a very uh, attentive eye on the politicians. So in general, I don't think this is going to be something serious with their corruption. Plus, you know, when blood everywhere, people are less bad. And many Ukrainians, they feel this unique kind of unity. I've told you that I was not a fan of President Zelensky and I can see some of his mistakes, but in general, I believe he's a very good person for this time. So I don't think that all of this money will be lost. And believe me, it only seems that um, uh, there are so many, uh, there are so many people um, that, 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 that is so much money. Because uh, I often get this question, like, why do you buy so many cars for, for the front lines? Because these cars can be destroyed and disappear really quickly. They don't, cars don't live long. People can lose everything within a day. It's good when they don't lose their lives. But uh, it even without bombings, even without shootings and shellings, uh, lots of things disappear uh, really quickly and uh, they are destroyed because of bad roads. They are destroyed because people had to leave the positions and many other things. So all of that money, I, I don't know, the run numbers that oh, we lose so many things daily, so much money daily that perhaps with all this money coming into Ukraine, they do not uh, cover the expenses. Mm -hmm. Uh, since it's close to the 4th of July here in the States, good reminder um, against England. How to, Okay, these are, by the way, congratulations to the coming 4th of July. And many Ukrainians, uh, like we really like the uh, traditions of American democracy and uh, many things we... Um, compare with our history and uh, th there is much inspiration that we drive from uh, the United States. Uh, are the names Red Rus and Ruthenian refer to Ukraine? Yes, more or less. Not all the territory of Ukraine, but definitely they are. Uh, they denote Ukraine. And uh, sometimes when I read, for example, Wikipedia articles and so on, you can come across these names and uh, you will see that. Um, that this is just like Kiev Rus is just the Ukraine in the past. Uh, okay. Future of international students who are studying in Ukraine. Well, all depends on when it is safe to study in Ukraine because this is very important. Ukraine has lots of international students and uh, I do believe that the standards of Ukrainian education are pretty normal and can guarantee um, knowledge, uh, but uh, safety and lives of international students are a priority. And as long as it is not safe to come back in Ukraine and still we don't know how will we start uh, this new educational year because of, of uh, uh, even in the semi-safe zones where we live, we have air raid sirens and we have to react. And not all the universities are uh, have enough bomb shelters, for example, and uh, this can lead to problems and maybe they, we will continue teaching offline. Not many people are excited with this COVID Pandemics declining, we still have to follow these rules, but somehow it prepared us uh, a lot. So in general, uh, I cannot tell you what is the future of uh, international students in Ukraine is closely connected with the future of Ukraine. Uh, yeah, you, are there Ukraine Russians in Donbass changing their minds? With the, I don't know what is that Ukraine Russians. Russian-speaking Ukrainians are not Russians. And there are also Russians who consider themselves political Ukrainians. Uh, but I can tell you that, of course, many people who were more or less neutral to Russia 
uh, traditionally in the cities like Kharkiv, who is close to Russia, they had more contacts with uh, Russians. So uh, many of them have totally changed their attitude. And we have this joke that instead of denazifying Ukraine, Putin actually nazified Ukraine. Of course, it's a joke, but definitely many people, uh, many people become uh, more um, patriotic and more Ukraine uh, centered. Um, okay. Uh, will I do uh, a summers in uh, Lutsk hot and humid? Yes, uh, they are. Uh, but like now it's really hot and the region I live has lots of lakes, has lots of rivers and swamps and it can get really damp. I think we don't have the best climate here, but I love it because I was born here, I grew up here. But for example, this morning we had rain and then after rain it was a little bit cooler and I went to the park and it was really difficult to breathe because not enough air. Uh, but uh, it, can be, it can be good. Uh, when will I do a co cooking vlog? <laughs> I would say after we win, but I guess sooner. <laughs> I think. Let me, uh, guys, some, after some of uh, below some of my videos, please uh, leave me um, comments on uh, what would you like me to cook. Maybe borscht, maybe some other Ukrainian dishes, because I'm able to do that. But I need inspiration and some good news uh, all around. Um, yeah, thank you for uh, wishing me to stay uh, safe and I'm trying to do uh, all I do, uh, all I can to stay safe. Um, mm, okay, I sometimes get heated when I see people take the side of Russia and see really weird information that I see as untrue. How do you look at that? Oh, of course, I re get really angry. But I do believe we have less people now in Ukraine who are, uh, like, in Ukraine, You, it's difficult to find a person, you know, who is, uh, take the side of Russia. And in the world, I don't have direct contacts in my uh, comments. comments. I can, uh, like, I, I don't quarrel, I don't spend my time doing that because there are other things, useful things that I have to do. And um, then uh, perhaps uh, uh, just like if, it, if these are normal people, not like poisoned by Russian propaganda, people who are Russian chauvinists, then of course perhaps it's important to find some arguments, some facts that will demonstrate them that, uh, like I don't know how can you say that Russia is normal killing Ukrainian children, t targeting uh, shopping malls, uh, doing uh, crimes in Bucha and Derpin, uh, there is no excuses. Maybe before this kind of war, it was possible to try and understand something, but now it's impossible. So definitely, I don't know, uh, if there are some minor mistakes, it's possible to discuss them. But if in general a person says, it's okay, let's kill Ukrainians, definitely this person is like uh, worse, stronger arguments than conversation. Uh, okay. Okay, some questions and conversation. Um, thank you for those of you who believe in a positive future of Ukraine. I also believe so. And I believe that we will become stronger after this war and uh, there is no other way. Um, mm, Okay, uh, some other questions like where you... <laughs> okay. I read all the questions so sometimes, uh, not all the questions, but sometimes I get on the questions that I can get frustrated. So please forgive me if you see like <laughs> my face freezing for a second. Uh, well, of course I have lots of friends and close people in Ukrainian military and uh, they see that the situation is really hot and we do need the support of our allies and uh, mainly weapons uh, because uh, it all takes really long. And from what I understand, Lend-Lease is still not working to the fullest and 
only closer to autumn, we will receive everything we need. People need some training. Also, not all the money that we receive are spent on weapons and military things, but also helping some other countries, helping refugees. And when you look in detail, it all does not look that much optimistic. And we need that very much because now we mainly stop Russians with our soldiers, with their bodies, with their sacrifice. And I have already spoke about that in one of my vlogs, that not giving us missiles that can target Russian territory is kind of weird because we're not going to target civilian objects but you know things starting to burn in Belgorod and in Kursk and I cannot tell you that I don't like it oh what is my favorite food well I like potatoes <laughs> potatoes are pretty popular in the region where I live and I like fried potatoes they are different here in Ukraine from free uh, french fries they are softer and you can add some onion garlic and we eat them with sour cream you know ukrainians eat everything with sour cream also i eat meat and i prefer chicken and i'm not very much into cakes and buns and i don't know various vegetables cheeses pizza i love um and hot dogs talking about like not ideal food but salads and all of that so uh okay mm. why uh were you not fan of Zelensky what should he be doing pre-war to have your support Zelensky was very much far away from politics and uh he was very much into showbiz and he was very populistic like and one thing that stopped me really is the fact that of course the series with him in the main role uh, was manipulative then uh, he s said that he never voted on elections before he became a president he never participated in elections as a voter and for me that was like a sign of a person very far away from politics and also he was constantly talking that we can stop this war I have to speak with Putin and uh, it's very easy and I was very much afraid that uh, he will sell the territories, he will not fight if we have a problem. And that was a huge mistake because I believe he is the only one from all possible presidents in Ukraine that is brave and that managed to stand against this terror, to stand against Russia. So I have changed my opinion about him like 180 degrees and um, so on. Uh, uh, what uh, were your reaction when you hear of Ukraine? I, I don't. Do you like kefir? Um, <laughs> no, that not that much. I prefer yogurt more, but many people drink kefir here and sour cream. You know, it's a top. Uh, okay. Um, Private photos of Zelensky. I don't see any problems. He looks nice, so his private photos can look nice. I doubt Russians, if they leak his private photos, so what? Many people will enjoy his private photos and he will survive that. He's kind of, he doesn't have much. He's not that reserved. Um, a member of parliament, Kira Rudic, says that allies are only sending 10% of weapons that you they promise. Is that accurate? No, I think more than 10%. Definitely more than 10%, but not enough. Okay, um, good. Mm. The support of Ukraine and why did Zelensky get into politics? I think he's ambitious. And uh, from uh, what I have heard uh, about people surrounding him, I, he always was a dreamer and maybe people around him were inspiring him to give it a try. So uh, we will never know. But now I think that um, he's just like, he was surprisingly strong during this period of time and the main reason why I did not want to vote for him because I thought he would do the contrary to what he does and now I feel like worried that after the war you know we always have this phrase that you have a president of war and you have a president of peace and maybe just like with Churchill people will not support him 
later, but at this moment, the support is really strong. Uh, and uh, that is why uh, <clears throat> all these videos that you mentioned, or films, he was a comedian. And uh, I know that uh, at the beginning of his campaign, many people wanted to compare him to President Ronald Reagan because he was also an actor and turned out to be a strong president of the United States. And he even dubbed with his voice uh, the uh, documentary about Reagan to build some associations in our head with him. Uh, <laughs> okay, and I guess maybe a couple of questions and we will finish. And a question about my like, uh, is Poroshenko politically visible? Uh, yes, he's politically visible, but I think he's a little bit depressed because he realizes that he won't be able to become a president, won't be elected, but he can be a member of the European Parliament, for example. That could be a nice job. Someone of you offered that in uh, comments. Uh, my favorite, don't you like this, earrings? I thought they match perfectly my T-shirt. <laughs> so I have many favorite earrings, you know. Um, and yeah, I also like Zelensky and I don't know who would be a good president. I don't want to be a president. <laughs> when I was a little girl, I wanted to be a president. Now, after seeing it all in my own eyes, um, I I don't want to be a president. I think it's very bad for your health. Look at the photos of Zelensky before the start of the war and right now. It is a totally different uh, person. But of course, the time is also really difficult for him. Um, good. Uh, and, um, Okay, thank you very much uh, for being with me during this hour. And uh, most <laughs> of all, um, no, I'm not going to run for Parliament. <laughs> I'm going to run a couple of kilometers. You know, uh, I have started running. I'm not a runner, but recently I have started running. <laughs> and I run like a kilometer or something and believe that I'm a hero. <laughs> And uh, thank you very much for being with me. I really appreciate this kind of conversations that we have in my channel. And I'm honored to have you with me. When I have started this vlog, I did not expect to have so many uh, subscribers. And uh, I'm not like kind of running for the numbers of subscribers. So you congratulate me with approaching thousands and hundreds and so on. But the most important thing for me is that you are so really clever. You are so really uh, special. And I do notice that other people coming in my channel, they value this kind of conversation that we have after these videos. And I learn a lot, thing, a lot of things from you. And maybe if I'm not always answering a really long <laughs> that thing that you put after your video, um, it's not because like I have like, a lot of them and I read all of them and even if I say exactly or true this means that I'm super with you and maybe I will retell your stories retell your jokes share them and they inspire me a lot and uh, thank you and please speak about Ukraine in your countries and this is really important because this is not normal what is going on here and uh, the world should not get used to war in Ukraine, war in the world. And of course, I do dream that the day comes when we can talk about like earrings, cooking and uh, traveling. And thank you for watching me. Slava Ukraini.